the detection of um, localized prostate cancer and then, of course, risk stratification are both key to diagnosing the disease at the earliest possible time for treatment and then, of course, for figuring out which patients can be allowed to really live with the disease because we know a lot of men will die with prostate cancer if it's um, not highly aggressive prostate cancer and do not need to be treated. And that's why in the field we have surveillance, active surveillance, and watchful waiting as we term those um, areas where we can forego aggressive treatment. On the other hand, we also have men who present with aggressive disease, which will require and does require treatment. And we need to figure out who they are to your point of identification. And then of course, um, to risk stratification. I think that we've made great strides in the field uh, in terms of PSA detection, in terms of guidelines for who should get PSA tested. And then, of course, for trying to risk stratify, there is still a lot of ongoing work. So the overall conclusion is, I think that we've made great strides. A lot of work still remains to be done. Uh, one is we definitely have a serious issue worldwide, I think, with figuring out not only the fact that we have guidelines, but also how to make sure that individuals are able to access healthcare, of course, access to healthcare, um, to be able to follow those guidelines. They have a primary care doctor in the first place to access PSA testing, for example, at the right time in their lives. And then on top of that, for risk stratification as well, we still have a lot of ongoing work to be done about figuring out which types of tests are sort of the best. There's a lot of ways that we're currently working on it in terms of genomic risk stratification, in terms of, uh, of course, imaging-based modalities that are ever more sensitive to capturing um, localized disease and micrometastatic disease. And as we, for example, have been developing as a field PSMA-targeted agents um, and PSMA-targeted detection, we've realized that, for example, with conventional CT or PET-CT imaging, we might be, of course, missing. There's a limit of detection. And so if you, for example, diagnose someone with localized aggressive disease, but you fail to, by whatever imaging modality, work them up for the fact that they have micrometastatic disease and really have metastatic disease on presentation rather than high-risk localized disease or just localized disease, that would be a difference in terms of potentially how we approach treatment. And so there's, of course, the limits of our technology at the moment and a lot of work that's uh, ongoing is really addressing those issues. So I think that there's never been a better uh, time, in a sense, for both detection and risk stratification of prostate cancer. We've got a lot more information than we've ever had in, uh, to give to our patients. But of course, this is an ever-evolving and um, fast-changing area where uh, great promise is uh, really in the air.